I think people can take away when I'm speaking that there's a couple of key elements to success. I think having a huge dream and being a leader really do go hand in hand. And through a personal testimony, that's what they're going to drive from what I have to say tonight. I think it's going to be very interesting to them. Also, adversity. Adversity has a way of introducing us to ourselves, has a way of tapping us on the shoulder and saying, I got something for you. And also, passion and desire, really the bedrock or the cornerstone of what it takes to be successful. It's going to wade us through those tough times. Yeah, in, in my baseball career, I'll tell you, there was a lot of tough times. I mean, sometimes seeing the ball come in 100 miles an hour it can be a pretty daunting task. You know, it's like, it sounded high. You got to just zip the crowd out, okay? They don't matter. Just get rid of them. Success is built on a series of small conquests that over time builds up a momentum of its own. It's not about being grandiose once in a while. It's about being good every day. Pretty soon that momentum keeps feeding itself and then you have an inertia of positivity moving in one direction. You want to talk about leadership? I'm telling you what, you want to see who the real leaders are in the world? Check the people with the arrows in their back. That's who the leaders are because believe me, they put it out there for people. When you can lead with a servant's heart, people will follow you. People that play the poor me, they play the meek role to try to get a one-up on somebody else. You understand? I'm not talking about the people that are meek normally. I'm talking about using it as an advantage to try to get more in life, which I am against. At the next vacancy for God, if I'm elected, I shall forgive last the delicately wounded who, having been slugged no harder than anyone else, never got up again, neither to fight back nor to finger their jaws in painful admiration. They who are wholly broken, and they in whom mercy is understanding, I shall embrace at once and lead to pillows in heaven. But they who are meek by trade, baiting the best of their betters with extortions of a mock helplessness, I shall take last to love and never holy. Let them all into heaven, I abolish hell. But let it be read over them as they enter. Beware the calculations of the meek, who gambled nothing, gave nothing, and could never receive enough. Mm. Sometimes when I'm speaking and I bring out a certain subject, sometimes I think people are in the stands or in the audience thinking, mm, is he talking about me? <laughs> and, if, and if that's the case, then I'm doing my job. I'm bringing a realization to people that if I can get to them, then I'm doing what I had set out to do. I'm raising an awareness. What's it like to face a Major League Baseball player throwing at 100 miles an hour? Well, somebody figured it out. And it's about three one hundredths of a second you have to decide whether you're going to swing the bat or not. I never thought it was a decision-making process because in that case, the catcher would be throwing the ball back to the pitcher already. It was more of a reactionary thing. In other words, if you can clap your hands as fast as you can together, that's how much time you have to decide whether you're going to swing or not. Yeah, when I was going through that throwing problem, there was a time in San Diego where I just thought about quitting. I mean, I thought it was just got to be too hard. And then I thought, what am I going to quit to? There's no quitting. There's no crying in baseball and there's no quitting. So I took this on as a personal fight, as a quest, something more, something bigger than baseball. It wasn't about baseball anymore. It was a personal thing with me. And that's how I started to overcome this problem. My dad ruled the house with an iron fist. He was a tough German. He, my dad made John Wayne look like a wimp, okay? That's the way he was. He, my dad was not going to star at Laughs Unlimited, and he was not going to write a romantic novel. I promise you. We all have these big dreams when we're kids. You ever ask a kid what they're going to do when they grow up? Hey, I'm going to be a ballerina. I'm going to be a lion tamer. I'm going to be an astronaut. You know, why do we always relinquish our dreams when we get older. You get 25 years old and people say, yeah, I'm really happy to work my way up to maybe middle management. Why is that? Nothing else I wanted to do when I was growing up other than become a Major League Baseball player. I'm telling you, it was a dream that was like, I was ready to burn every bridge at such a young age, if there was a bridge, because I had a burning desire to be successful in baseball. Willing to put it all on the line and roll the dice Hey, you see common denominators everywhere, in the workplace, in the baseball field, it doesn't matter where you are. The common denominators that can transcend uh, area and time. We talk about leaders way back when, hundreds, thousands of years ago, the same principles apply now. 
I think one of the most important things people can remember is their thought process. Whatever you think about the most is going to grow the most. And that's a fact. If, if everybody could just try to put in their mind for 24 hours all positive thoughts, you wonder what would happen. You might have a turnabout in their lives. It may be the starting point for all this positive energy to come about, but it needs to start with one initial thought and then build on that. 